Welcome to the HTML5 project training series. I'm Mike King, your host. And in this tutorial, this is part four of our 2D, 3D transforms tutorial on the changes to CSS3 with the transformations. And in this tutorial, we're actually going to be talking about the perspective property. So in this tutorial, we'll be demonstrating the perspective property in CSS3, and we'll be going through a bunch of different demonstrations as to how we use it and why it's so important for our 3D transformations. So let's go ahead and move into our development environment and demonstrate the perspective property in CSS3. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and drop out of our presentation, drop into our development environment, and I want to go ahead and confirm that we have Apache server up and running, which we do. That's good. Let's go ahead and bring up Google Chrome, which will be the web browser that I'll be using for this demonstration, and Sublime Text 2, which will be my text editor. And you'll notice I've already got my start file loaded. So in this demonstration, we're actually going to look at the perspective property inside of CSS3. First thing I'm going to do is go ahead and save this file. I'm going to do a save as. Let's go ahead and save this as example underscore one dot HTML. Save that in my directory folder. And I'm going to go back here and load up example one so that we've got it loaded in our browser window. So as we make changes, we can refresh the browser and see those changes. So now we've learned the properties that are available to be used in CSS3 that will allow us to make our new transforms in both 2D and 3D space. So let's get into making some examples of how these properties can be used as we want to create these 3D objects. So the first thing we'll demonstrate is how we use perspective to simulate 3D space. This is a very important concept of 3D. We can accomplish perspective in two ways. We can use the transform property with perspective as a functional notation, or we can use the perspective as a property itself. We're going to demonstrate both of these inside of our demonstration. So the first thing I want to do is let's go ahead and get some code into our HTML document. You'll notice I've got my basic start document here. I'm going to come down in my body element, and I'm going to add a paragraph and an H2 heading. So I'm going to come right down below my opening body tag and go ahead and put in an H2 with a paragraph. And basically, we're just talking about what we're going to do in this presentation. So I'm using transforms with functional prop perspective. And um, in this example, we use the transform property with perspective as a functional notation. Notice that in our styling, we have the transform and the perspective set in the same styling element. And that's what we're going to do in the first demonstration. We're actually going to have these in our same element. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up a new section that we're going to add to this HTML document. I'm going to come right below that paragraph tag. I'm going to go ahead and paste that in place. And I'm setting up a section, opening section tag. I'm giving it an ID of green with a class of container. Then I'm actually opening up a div, which is actually going to have a box in it. And it's going to be a green box. And I'm giving it classes green box. Let's go ahead and save those changes. Refresh our browser window. You know, you won't see anything but the text right now because we haven't done any styling. And then right below that, I'm actually going to add another one. So I'm going to come down right below that section element where I've closed up my section element. And I'm going to put in another section and it's going to be using the perspective property. And then in this example, let me go ahead and get my opening P tag in there. In this example, we'll use the perspective property. Notice that the transform is in a separate styling element. So we're actually going to demonstrate both ways that we can use perspective in this. And you'll see that as we enter the styling. I'm going to go ahead and copy the section element for this particular demonstration. Paste that in place. Hang on one second. Once I get everything cleaned up here, I'm going to go ahead and pause so that if you want to type this in, you can have ample opportunity to do that. Let me go ahead and clean up my formatting. Save all these changes, refresh our browser window. Now would be a good time to pause if you want to go ahead and type this in, if you don't have access to the exercise files. And now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and start adding some styling that will allow us to actually see what I was talking about here with these different ways that we can enter perspective. So the first thing I want to do is let's go up into my head section. I want to go ahead and give myself some styling tags. So I'm just going to have an opening style tag. And I'm going to come down a few lines and put in a closing style tag. And again, the reason I'm keeping the styling embedded in the HTML document is just so it's ease for us going back and forth. So you can see what we're doing here. Normally, as I think I've explained in the previous tutorials, we would always have this as part of an external style sheet. And we would not embed these inside the document itself. The first styling I want to do is for the container element itself. So inside my style tags, I'm actually going to come down and I'm using my container class, because remember we set up a container class right here. 
So using that container class, I'm actually going to set up the styling for the container. It's going to be a width of 150 pixels, a height of 150 pixels. I'm going to give it a border of one pixel solid with a gray color. And I'm going to have 20 pixel margin top and bottom, auto, left and right. I'm going to save all those changes and refresh our browser window. And you'll notice now you can actually see the outline from the border of the container itself. We're not actually going to look at the bottom one just yet. We're actually going to work with this top one. But because they both have the box class, you'll notice I've got a box class. I actually have two classes on my divs. I have an aqua class, a green class, and then they both share a class called box. That's going to be the next thing I'm going to enter into our styles. So I'm going to come right down below my container, and I'm going to format the box. And the box is going to have a width of 100% and a height of 100%. So what I'm basically doing is telling the box, you're the same size as the container. Go ahead and save those changes, refresh our browser window. You shouldn't see any difference because all we've done is actually assign a size to the box. We haven't really given it any properties yet. We're getting ready to do that in a minute. Good time to pause if you want to go ahead and type those in. All right, so now let's go ahead and address this first box that we have, this green box. Because I have, actually have a box that I want to format here. And it's my green box. I have a class of green and a class of box. So I'm going to go ahead and get very specific how I target this. So I'm going to come down here right below where I have the box. And I'm going to target my ID of green, which also has a class of box. And what I'm doing there is I'm actually giving it, I'm setting up a background color for that particular box, and then I'm putting a transform on it. And what I'm doing is I'm setting up a transform transform with a perspective of 600 pixels and a rotation of 40, rotation Y, I should say, of 45 degrees. I've left the spacing in here for clarity. You don't have to leave it there. It's up to you if you want to or not. Go ahead and save the change, refresh the browser window. Now you can actually see that 45 degree, 600 pixel perspective on the green box that's in our sheet. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down right below that, and now we're gonna add, anyway, that's, I'm sorry, for we move forward, let's go ahead and pause if you wanna go ahead and type that in. Remember, we're going to the ID of green, which is right here, we've got an ID of green, and we actually have a class of box. So right there. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to my aqua box. I'm gonna come down right below where I put my green box in and I'm gonna target my aqua. But this time I'm only gonna give it, and keep in mind that's my second box down here. I'm only assigning the perspective, not the rotate. We're actually gonna handle the rotate separately. So I'm gonna come down right below that and I'm gonna target, again, my ID of aqua but with a class of box so now we're actually into the element itself right here and this time i'm doing the rotate the rotate y so i'm doing a transform rotate y 45 degrees and i actually did the perspective in the parent element and keep in mind that that's what this is this is actually this section is the parent element of this particular div so in this example i targeted the parent for perspective and in our first example, I actually targeted the item for both perspective and rotate. And that's what we're talking about in the paragraphs. Let's go ahead and save these changes. Okay, let me get up here. Let me go ahead and good time to pause if you want to catch up. Then I'm going to refresh my browser window. And we're going to discuss what we just did. Okay, let's go ahead and save all our changes, refresh our browser window. So now you see we have this aqua and we have this green box. They're both on a 45 degree, but we've actually gone about it two different ways. There's two different formats, but they both triggered the 3D space. But there's a difference in the way that they were entered. The first entry, this one where we actually did the green box right here, this is called functional notation entry. It's very convenient for directly applying a 3D transformation on a single element. We actually did the transform per, for perspective and rotate Y in the same line of code. And it's very convenient when you're working with a single element. When used on multiple elements, the transform elements will not display as expected. They'll be slightly offline. So if I were to use the same thing, and you're gonna see that in the next, next example, if we were to do it that way with multiple elements, they kind of get slightly out of kilter. And then we recommend that you do it in the individual transformations. So if you were to use the transform across elements with varying positions, each element will have its own vanishing point. That's where we get into this perspective and we're gonna get into perspective origin in a minute. 
This can be corrected by using the perspective property on the parent element, which is what we did here. We actually use the perspective property on the parent element, which is aqua, because remember, aqua is the parent element, that's the section that actually contains this div. So by using that on the parent element, the perspective on the parent element, it keeps everything clean. This can be corrected by using the perspective on the parent element so that each child shares the same 3D space, which is what we actually demonstrated with the, with the second one. It's gonna get a little clearer with our next example. So let's go ahead and look at another example as to how we do this. All right, so what we're gonna do, let's do a different example here where we can actually get a better idea of what I mean by this transformation property and how it works better if you actually separate the way that you do it with multiple objects. I'm gonna go ahead and do a save as, let's go ahead and save this as example two. So if you have access to the exercise folders, you'll have all this. And this is example two inside this chapter folder. I'm gonna go ahead and pull out all my styles. We're gonna start from scratch. I'm gonna go ahead and pull out all the HTML because we're gonna start that from scratch also. I'm gonna go back here and refresh and let's go ahead and load up example two. Actually, we need to save all the changes and then load up example two so that it's empty. Now we're gonna actually go ahead and enter some new CSS or some new HTML code. I'll give you a second to copy this in once I get it in place. And this is where we do a transform in conjunction with rotate. And this is what we talked about where they're not gonna line up as expected when we first do this. And you'll see that as we get into this demonstration because I'm gonna demonstrate it in both ways so that you get to see it both ways. All I've done is I've actually got an H3 heading. I've put in a paragraph text which explains what we're gonna do. I've opened up a section. I've given it an ID of green with a class of container. And then I've got nine figures empty figures that are actually inside this section. And that's what we're gonna actually be styling when we set up the demonstration. Let's go ahead and save those changes. I'm gonna go ahead and scroll up. Good time for you to pause if you wanna go ahead and type all that in. So now what I wanna do is I wanna add some styling to this. So I'm gonna go up in the head section of my document inside my style tags. And the first thing I wanna do is let's go ahead and style the container itself. And that's what's actually gonna be holding all our items. So I'm just gonna come down a few lines. I'm gonna identify my class container. Let me clean up this formatting a little bit. Then I've assigned it a width, a height, a border, a margin. And I'm gonna go ahead and save those changes. Let's go ahead and refresh the browser window. And all we've created now is this container that's actually gonna hold these items that we're gonna mess with, that we're gonna goof with here. So we've got the first thing in for the container. Now let's go ahead and actually configure the figure elements that are inside my container. So again, I'm just gonna come down right below that in my CSS. And now again, I'm getting very specific with my selector. I'm saying I wanna go into the container class and I wanna format the figures that are inside that container class. I'm displaying these as a block. I want them to have a 40 pixel width, a 40 pixel height. I want them all to float left and I wanna give them a margin of five pixels. Let's go ahead and save those changes, refresh the browser window, can't see anything because we haven't given it a color yet. But that's what we're gonna do right with our next bit of code. So I'm gonna come down here and right below that where I've done my figures, I'm gonna go ahead and target my ID of green. And hang on, let me clean this up and I'll show you exactly where that is. So now we're actually looking for the ID of green. So we're going into the section. We're saying any section with an ID of green has a figure element. I want you to give it a background of green. And then I want you to transform the perspective 400 pixels and rotate it 45 degrees. Let's go ahead and save all those changes, refresh our browser window. Now we can actually see these nine elements that are inside that container. And you can see how they all, they look a little bit off in the way that the perspective is. And again, it's because we've done this on a single line. We talked about this in the last tutorial that if you really wanna do this on multiple objects, it's best not to do it on a single line. Because again, it, it throws them off. You can tell by looking at it, they look just a little bit off in the way in which they're displayed. So now we're gonna go look at the other method and how we can clean that up. All right, so let's keep moving right on track. I'm gonna go ahead and grab some additional HTML code. And right below where I put our last group of code, right where we close out that section, I'm just gonna come down a couple lines. And again, I'm gonna put in another H3, transform apply to the parent element. And then that parent element will apply the transform to all the children. And you'll see that it's gonna actually clean up this alignment issue that we had. Again, the same nine figures that I had in the previous 
demonstration. It's just now I've changed my ID to Aqua, still have my container. So I'm gonna share that same container class that we shared with the previous one. In fact, when I save the changes, you'll notice the second container comes up right away. And again, that's because we're sharing the formatting for this container class, but I'm gonna get very specific when we do the Aqua ID and that we're not gonna have these on a single line. We're actually gonna do them by the parent element. So the first style I want to do, hang on, before we do that, let me go ahead, scroll up just a little bit. Good time to pause if you want to type that in. In the event you don't have access to the exercise files. One thing I do want to do before we go forward, let's go ahead and do a save as. I want to save this as example three. Again, this way if you have access to the exercise files, you'll have this example in there also. Now I want to go back up into our styling and right below where we actually set up this green figure, I want to address my ID of dark blue. So I'm going to come right down here and I'm going to paste that in dark blue. And actually, you know what? I'm going to change this. I forgot I had changed the color. That needs to be dark blue or else we're going to target the wrong thing. Let's go ahead and save all those changes. So now I'm giving the dark blue the perspective and keep in mind that that section is the parent of all my figures. So now we're giving the perspective to the parent element, not to the actual or the individual element itself. And then what I'm going to do with my individual figure elements, I'm going to come down here and just like we had done on the previous example, I'm going to go ahead and target the dark blue ID and all the figures that reside inside a dark blue ID. So all these which are children of this dark blue ID because they're inside this section. They're now being targeted with a dark blue background and I'm gonna do the transform rotate Y inside the figure, whereas I actually did the perspective inside the parent. Let's go ahead and save all those changes. Let me go ahead and scroll up so you can see all that. There you go, good time to pause if you wanna go ahead and type in the styling. So the value of the perspective determines the intensity of the 3D effect. Think of it this way. The value signifies the distance from the viewer to the object. So that 400 pixels, not a bad distance. The greater the value, the further the distance. So the less intense the visual effect. So a perspective of 2000 displays a, displays a very subtle 3D effect as if we're viewing the object from a long distance away. And I'll demonstrate that as we move through this exercise. Whereas a perspective of 100 produces a very pronounced 3D effect. So let's go ahead and save all our changes. Let's go ahead and refresh our browser window so you can see what we're actually doing here. Oops, got to go load example three. And you'll notice now that we've got a nice clean perspective because we actually gave the perspective to the parent element, which is the actual container. That's the gray line. And we just set our rotate here. And if I were to change this, let's make this 2000 so we can soften that. 3D effect, you can actually see how those adjusted, they shifted. If I were to make it 100, which would be much more pronounced, save that change for perspective. Now you see it's much, much more pronounced as to the effect of the 3D perspective inside the document, inside our, inside our browser window. So adjusting the perspective changes the perspective angle and the distance the viewer appears to be away from the item that you're actually looking at. So I mean, it's pretty cool. And we can do the same thing, by the way, with our first one. We can actually change the first one in the same way. But keep in mind, it's going to throw it off a little bit because, again, we're not really... Let's go ahead and save all our changes, refresh our browser window. We're not seeing here... It's not as clean because again, we're doing it individually to the items and not to the actual parent element. We're down in the second example of dark blue, we're actually doing it to the parent element and not to the individual items as we are up in the top with the green element. And there you can get a good idea of how it really throws it off, the perspective off by changing the way it looks inside the parent as compared to inside the child. Because those are the both the same settings. Here's the parent element set to 100 pixels. And here is the child element, which are the green elements set to 100 pixels. They actually, they have the exact same setting, but look at the difference in the way it throws off the perspective by not being assigned to the parent. So keep that in mind when you're setting up your 3D objects. So the next thing I want to look at is let's look at perspective origin and how that impacts CSS3 
with some of the prospective properties that we have now in CSS3. All right, so let's look at the impact of prospective origin inside CSS3. First thing I'm gonna do, let's go ahead and do a save as. Let's save this as example four. So we don't write over the changes that we made for three. So the perspective origin property defines where a 3D element is based in the X and the Y axis. This property allows you to change the bottom position of 3D elements. When defining the perspective origin property for an element, it is the child elements that are positioned, not the element itself. This property must be used together with the perspective property and only affects 3D transformed elements. So I'm going to go ahead and add a new property to our dark blue perspective origin right here. So I'm going to add this perspective origin. I'm going to give it 100% and 100%. Let's go ahead and save the change. I want to go ahead and refresh the browser window. And actually, I'm going to take this back to, let's get this back to a reasonable percentage. Let's make it 800. It's a good perspective. Change the update the window. Oops, got to go in load number four, making all these changes and we're not updating the window. And you can see now we've got a nice perspective origin, but watch what happens here as we play with these percentages. Let's say 50 and 50. This actually should put us in the center if I'm not mistaken. Save the change, refresh. And again, remember we're only looking now at the blue because we're only playing with the perspective origin of the blue. If I make it zero and zero, You'll notice now it looks like it's almost taken out completely. All we're seeing now is our angle and our 800 pixel perspective itself. We have no slant whatsoever. As I increase these, the perspective origin, which is actually where it ends, the beginning point, slowly increases. You're going to see this a lot more. This, we'll have a lot better examples of perspective origin when we actually get into our three-dimensional cube. So you can actually see that rear item shrink and expand as we change the perspective origin for that particular item. But I just wanted you to be aware it's there. It is a property now in CSS3 that we can use inside of our development for three, three CSS3 three-dimensional items. And we'll be using it in future tutorials. So I hope you like this one. In the next tutorial, we're actually going to start getting now into 3D items, or three-dimensional items. What we're going to do is we're going to do a card flip demonstration. I'm going to show you how you can actually have a three-dimensional space appear on your screen. And by doing certain things, you can have to flip and actually have different, different information on each sides of the card. And we can actually animate that 3D animation to flip it over. So it actually gives you a lot of abilities, a lot of different things you can do with this inside of our HTML documents. So I look forward to seeing you in the, in the next tutorial.